Hi, I'm Ed Amoroso from Tag Cyber, and I'm sitting here with my friend Mike McKee, who is the Chief Executive Officer for Observe It, which is a cybersecurity company located up in Boston. Boston, we just took the train down this morning, Ed. That's all awesome. smooth. Yeah, I love this hotel. It's actually three and a half hours of quiet time to get something done, which is not easy in the world that we live in with the business being so busy, four kids at home. So uh, <laughs> I savor those trips to and from New York. I visited your office a couple of times. You guys have a beautiful space yeah, in thank Boston. You. Thank you. You like won awards for that space? Yeah, we're on the 21st floor of nice. 200 Clarendon. My wife's an architect, so it's an IMP building. Oh, okay. uh, so she's happy about that. Uh, we haven't, but uh, it's a great spot to work. I mean, Boston's really changed in the last 10 years, and a lot of tech companies have come from the suburbs into the city, and we're lucky enough right to be in the middle. You guys are hiring too, right? So people we watching? We are definitely hiring, yes, please. Kids want to be in Boston. All kind good. Of awesome place yeah, to be. close to the Charles River, close to all the action. It's good. That's great. Now, we're going to get into cybersecurity and yep. what you guys do. Yeah. But tell me a little bit about you. You have an interesting past, you're an athlete. Yeah, I thought you were going to make fun of the fact I'm Canadian. Nah, uh, nah, nah, so, nah, nah, nah. Uh, But that like does Canadian. tie to my athletic pursuits. Mm -hmm. I grew up playing hockey. I right. uh, was lucky enough to come down and play college hockey in the States. And then was lucky enough after that to play professional hockey for three years. Mm -hmm. um, actually saw the 1994 Stanley Cup champion New York Ranger yeah. uh, tribute on the sidewalk when I was walking down here. We like our Rangers here. Yeah, that was yeah. the last year that I played actually. It was 95. Yeah. Um, so played professionally for three years, which was great. Mm -hmm. And then had to retire at the ripe old age of 26 due to concussions. Oh. So I actually meant. went into another field down here working at Goldman Sachs, oh. uh, just down the street for a couple of years before moving up to Boston to go to business school and then going to technology. Tell me about the company. How did you get involved with the company? Yeah, so through in our investors, uh, Bain Capital Ventures, mm -hmm. uh, I was at another cybersecurity company called Rapid7. Yeah. And actually, good, fun, good company. great company. Yeah. And uh, vividly remember going public on NASDAQ yeah. back in the summer of 2015. Wasn't planning on going anywhere, was, was running customer success and services for them. And then the CEO reached out to me saying, Bain had reached out to him saying, hey, can we talk to Mike? Mm. Uh, in much the same way that he's contributed to the growth of Rapid7, we've got another company with some really good technology that hasn't been going to market that effectively. What do you want to take a look at it? Yeah. So yeah. went to Tel Aviv for the first time in my life where the company's founded and uh, met the engineering team there, met the folks in Boston where the company's headquarters was and was really impressed by the technology. Uh, mm -hmm. So made the leap in March of 16, which feels about like 20 years ago now, not two years ago, uh, but it's been a really good experience so far. You guys were just hitting, I think, the wave where people were, well, I think in the industry, figuring out that insider threat is probably staring at you as the top risk. Maybe third party and insider being the two things that everybody yeah, and you guys, you guys, we actually consider, cover both. I was going to say, we consider third party and insider yeah. the same thing. Yeah. It's someone who's got access to the network, that's got access to the crown jewels, that you want to know what they're doing. And yeah. you want to get those early warning signs when they're doing something they should. And so it is amazing in the last two years how many people have realized that this is a blind spot that they have. And they've realized that they put up pretty good barriers to keep a lot of the malware out and the ransomware and the hackers. But those people walking in with a badge every day, or those people that get a badge to be a contractor, sometimes those folks can do a lot of damage, whether it's on purpose or whether it's accidental. That's uh, something you want to know what's going on about. You know, as I got to know your team, when I first started discussions with your, your gang about this, I want to learn. I, I, w I came in worried that sort of snitchware might freak yeah, everybody yeah, out. I remember but that. When I thought about it, I think the idea that, that Providing a more protected environment, like making people feel like their their work PC or some yep. a, a monitored environment actually is good for them. That was an epiphany for me. Like I thought, wow, I, I kind of like that concept. Of yeah. Which would you rather be working on, on for example, your work PC where you're you're being monitored, but monitored for malware and other kinds of things, or basically running naked on something not protected? I, I thought a long time about that and I thought that's actually a pretty good value prop. Is that part of the equation? Yeah, I think the two big epiphanies that people have are, number one, you're trying to protect the intellectual property of the company. Yeah, right. The intellectual property of the company has been built by the people in that company. Yeah. 
And those people obviously want it to be valuable, want the company to do well. And if there isn't someone protecting that, that's a bad thing. So turning it around, as you said, to this is about protecting that IP, not watching you, I think is really important. And the other thing is the data that we're collecting around what people are doing, that data exists. Yeah, right. It's just been organized around machines as opposed to people. So the transcript that we come up with saying someone went to a website, someone went to a database, someone went to a cloud file sharing service, someone went to a certain application, that all exists in different tools. All we're doing, like I said, is putting in one spot so you can figure out whether the person's you know, abiding by the security policies or not. What are the typical customers? Are they big companies, medium, small? What, what's sort of the, uh, maybe there isn't a typical one. Yeah, no, I mean, there's definitely some uh, consistency. So financial services. Yeah. Uh, so historically it was regulated industries, yeah. financial services, healthcare. Tend to be bigger companies historically. Well, uh, tend to be bigger for sure, mm -hmm. but the motivation five, six, seven years ago was compliance. Mm -hmm. A couple of years ago, back to when this really took yeah, off, yeah. security crossed right. the barrier whereby it's the bigger motivating Reduced factor the rather than compliance. Compliance secondary. So the roots were a lot in the compliance industries like financial services, healthcare, yeah. government a little bit, but more and more non-regulated industries are equally concerned because what they're worried about is data exfiltration, someone sending files out. So. I would say our sweet spot is an organization with call it five to 10,000 employees where there's enough intellectual property to be concerned about and enough risk to be concerned about, but they don't have an army of security professionals. I mean, you go to the big banks, like they have armies of security professionals. Now they'll use our tools and augment what they build, but the sweet spot where, you know, I get the most satisfaction is helping those companies that need to get those early warning signs really quickly on what people are doing, but don't have the full security teams to do that. Do you see um, machine learning, artificial intelligence being an important factor kind of moving forward to reduce false positives and improve the detection rate? Is that something you guys are working on? Uh, for sure. Um, yeah. I think it'll, I mean, there's a massive shortage in security yeah. professionals out there. Yeah. So anything <coughs> that can be, anytime you can leverage artificial intelligence, machine learning, that's a good thing. I think it's pretty early in the life cycle of those technologies, and I think those technologies will keep getting better. Our approach right now is more rules-based, mm. so we have a library of 300 insider threat alerts that come from our 1,700 customers and come from the Carnegie Mellon Institute for Insider Threat. And quite often, a lot of the sort of basic blocking and tackling, uh, there are some pretty good predictors of someone doing something outside the norm. and. Often you can get those with our insider threat alerts, but more and more we want to complement that with machine learning and artificial intelligence mm -hmm. and leverage the analytics that you have. And if all of a sudden Ed's doing something different than what he normally does or going to applications that he doesn't normally go to, that's pretty easy to see that pattern mm -hmm. and pretty easy to highlight that as a risk factor. One good thing is as you get bigger, those rules become more enhanced because a, a rules-based approach inherently benefits from a bigger customer base. So for sure. You guys sure. must be getting better. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. And also putting that information in the cloud, which yeah. once again, four or five years ago was taboo. Yeah. Now organizations realize that it's often <laughs> a lot safer in the cloud than it is in their own data centers. That's taboo science. not to do it, right? Getting there, getting there. Yeah. But that allows us, I mean, historically our thousand plus customers, we're not sure which alerts are going off most often because the application's on-prem. As we host more and more of those, then all of a sudden we can see what alerts are going off, which ones are the biggest indicators of a risk by vertical, by company size, by geography. So we can leverage that intelligence. I don't want to say the network effect and get too carried away with buzzwords, mm -hmm. but there is a network effect of all of a sudden we start seeing what those indicators are and can share those with our customer base. Makes sense. Yeah. So. Hey, let me ask you about you. Sure. You run this cool tech company, yeah. you know. I, I know a lot of people watching, certainly some of the younger folks, Yeah, just dream of <laughs> running a tech company. Yeah, hopefully, they, wanted, space hopefully they want to dream about that tech company 24 hours a day because that's, <laughs> that's what's going through my head at night every night. Well, tell me about that. I mean, to, even to someone like myself, every time I see you, you looking real prosperous, you got a great yeah. team, the business is doing yeah, well. Yeah, thank you, thank well, you. What's it like? Uh, it's really exciting. Um, you know, it's funny, just this morning, so, you know, it's June 20th or whatever it is right now, so we're nearing the end of a quarter. Yeah. And normally this time of the quarter, the first thought going through my head when I wake up is, 
have any deals come in. Yeah, numbers. Uh, <laughs> and given that, you know, almost half of our sales are international, when I wake up in the morning, they're a good way through their day. Uh, interestingly enough, this morning, uh, we had a new board member presenting to the Tel Aviv team in Israel. Mm. And I was curious how it went, because, you know, I sort of connected the dots. And I wake up and I see seven photos. I see our whole team there excited. I see this new board member we're going to be announcing publicly pretty soon here. One of the leaders in cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. So the fact that he's, uh, you know, sees us as a leader inside our threat management software and is joining our board is huge. Right. So, you know, you get those wins at like 5.30 in the morning. Uh, and obviously sometimes there's no email. And you're like, how did it go? Where the deal is? Did it work out well or not well? So, so it's exciting uh, for sure. And what's amazing is you can see such tangible growth mm. literally month over month. Uh, I mean, I think about like a customer advisory board, uh, which you attended and were good enough to speak yeah. at, which I really appreciate. You know, two years ago, we had like six people in a basement conference room. Uh, when you were there, we had Ed, Ed Amoriso, featured speaker, former CISO of AT&T, and we had 17 people on the 39th yeah. floor of a really nice building. Uh, so to see progress like that is, is really satisfying. Um, but it's also, you know, it, you think about it a lot, right? I mean, you're answering to investors, you're answering to employees, and you're answering to customers. And sometimes it's hard to balance all those constituents. And, you know, I truly feel an obligation to deliver to all three of those parties. And, you know, that can be a taxing obligation at times. How, how hard is it to create an environment where people really are having fun and want to come to work? I, I would imagine that's got to be at least a third to a half of the, of the job, just the people <laughs> and the environment. Well, yeah. how, how do you go about that? Uh, it's an everyday effort. Yeah. Um, I tell the leadership team and I tell people whenever I can, every day it's getting better or worse. Yeah. It's never staying the same. Every hire, you're either hiring someone that's raising the bar or lowering that's the bar. That's a good bar. way to look at it. So Organic. it's a conscious effort. I finally, on the way down here, my nice train ride, like I mm -hmm. said, I read the article about breaking through 150 employees, which is a really big milestone, which is right where we are it's right like now. It's chasm. Right? It's chasm for sure. Yeah. And someone say, some people say it's the, the stand on the chair point where up to 150 people, you can stand on a chair and everyone can hear you. <laughs> Under, well, you're a pretty you know, tall guy. You could probably yeah, I'd have to stand on a chair. But even whether I'm on a chair or not, more than 100 people can't hear you. And Fair point. I sort of get chills down my spine when I think about processes and alignment and stuff like that. But we have to mature our communication. And when I say something to the leadership team or they're sharing other ideas, the onus is upon the leaders to make sure the people in their function get it. And you have to repeat, repeat, repeat. Uh, so you have to make sure that communication is happening such that you're building the culture, such that you're aligned and people are excited. Um, and I also, you know, I had a, a work colleague many years ago when I got into technology say that if an employee is learning, contributing, and having fun, you're doing pretty well. Mm. And we have a whole performance management system. By the way, a performance management system is 15 minutes of prep and it's the conversation. Uh, once a quarter with one's manager, where we call it the GPS, and it's not a uh, global positioning system, it's grow, perform, succeed. Like it. And if managers are sitting down with their people that are working for them, and they're getting at that core thing, you know, are you growing, are you performing, and are you succeeding? Uh, I think that goes a lot to building an environment where people have energy and uh, they feel good about what they're doing. That's fantastic. Now yeah. Let's talk about the future a little sure, bit. Sure, yeah. Let's start with security. Yeah. And we can talk maybe more broadly about business. You, you think we're getting to the point where either things are getting better, like offense and defense converging and maybe we're making progress, or is it uh, diverging and, and maybe we're going to see some big cyber catastrophes or problems? Where, where's your head on that? Yeah, I mean, you probably have a better perspective than I do seeing on, you know, more different yeah. security threats. Uh, you know, I was actually talking to someone on the train ride down here. It changes so quickly. It does. And, you know, I think generally speaking, organizations are doing a pretty good job. And I think they've mitigated a lot of threats. And, you know, the key is to realize that change never stops. you got to keep looking. Mm -hmm. So... From my perspective as a technology vendor, 
technology vendors have to get a lot better about being clear in what they do and what they don't do yeah. and thinking about the world from the CISO's perspective. You know, I often, you know, I go to CISO conferences all the time and it's a tough job. And I don't envy them trying to figure out all these buzzwords and all these claims that people are making. And, you know, we work really hard or we try to work really hard on understanding that perspective and making sure that what we're producing works because there's a lot of false claims out there mm -hmm. and that it works well within their environment. Mm -hmm. And to think about the other technology solutions they have to work with, to think about the people and process element. Like one of the things I'm scratching my head in right now is, you know, mitigating insider threats a team sport. You know, you got to work across HR, legal, IT, security, and you're talking about people, you're talking about people's jobs. Mm. And trying to help organizations think about putting those programs in place and then our technology being a piece of it is something I worry about a lot. So to answer your question, I, I do think uh, organizations are doing well uh, defending against cybersecurity threats, but you know, we have to help them work together and make sure all the different tools and solutions and people and processes work, yeah. work together. You know, since 2008, um, your time at uh, Rapid7 and, and here, yeah. well, we've seen the business expansion in some sense in the United States. It's yeah. been a, a reasonably good uh, time. You, you bullish about the next, maybe the next 10 years? You think there might be some bumps or you... From you cybersecurity or well, kind economy? Of in the economy? The, you know, generally in oh, business. I'm, I'm, I'm concerned. Uh, I'm generally yeah. in business. Yeah. You know, my wife and I were talking last night that we used to see Honda Pilots and Toyota Siennas and Honda Odysseys driving all around our neighborhood. And now it's like MDXs and Mercedes mm -hmm. and, you know, Range Rovers. Yeah. And between that and the salaries people are expecting and real estate values and stock market prices, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's human nature. Human nature is, you know, uh, overreacts on the upside and overreacts on the downside. Yeah. And I think yeah. we've had a, a good run here for a number of years. So, you know, I don't want to be bearish. I just think you have to be cautious. And as we think about growing our company, you know, we're about to announce the closing of a large Series B round of funding. Mm -hmm. And we want to use that money intelligently. You know, yeah. I feel great about our ability to expand the product, move to the cloud, expand the team uh, internationally. Uh, but we want to be smart because, yeah. uh, you know, right now there's too many vendors out there, <laughs> to be honest, and there'll be a consolidation. And we want to make sure that we're one of those vendors that is valued by customers, is being used by customers, and can weather any downturns if it should come. Yeah. Well, keep up all the great work. Yeah, thanks, Ed. You do such a nice job with the company. I know you create a nice environment there. Yeah. We benefit when you do the job <laughs> right. Well, we benefit from your expertise. Well, we, we uh, give it a shot, but normally I just uh, ask you guys the questions and we let people listen. Yeah, no, no, I, I really appreciate the support. I mean, you've been on both sides of it in terms of uh, being a customer, being a CISO, one of the first CISOs in the US, and then taking a broader look and trying to help those CISOs yeah. uh, think about all the different options out there. So I always say that the truth's out in the field, not in our four walls, as nice as those four walls are, or I should say more than four walls, sort of 16 walls given that we have offices in London, Israel, Boston, Singapore, and soon to be San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, but the truth's out there, and getting perspective from you on how we can help professionals fighting the good fight is uh, super helpful for us. Awesome, well thanks yeah. for stopping by New good. York City. Yeah, good to be here. You came Always. at a nice hot day. Yeah, it, 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 it can be a lot hot hotter day. in New York. I, it's, <laughs> it's still in that nice phase. The, the humidity hasn't set in yet, it's, it's looking good. Thanks for coming so, by, man. Awesome. Thank you, Appreciate Ed. Appreciate it. And we'll yeah. see you next time. Okay.